Sally, we we're, by the time this airs, this will be a couple days, uh, we, we are on a Saturday, when this airs above be midweek, we will have already put out our Sunday conversation, uh, a fourth Sunday, fourth Sunday conversation. We started off with Frank Bruno. Then we went to uh, Carl Persis, two Democrats. Then we went to um, uh, Pat Northey, uh, another Democrat from West Volusia, from Deltona. So three Democrats in a row in the Sunday conversation. Now on our fourth one, we have um, Jason Davis, Republican. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the following week, we'll have, uh, technically, Ben Johnson, Republican, Sheriff. What, does this sort of ramp things up uh, the more people see the exposure of what these candidates stand for in the last week? I think it's the, the best weeks? way. It's the best way to let someone speak for themselves. You know, being in a debate and trying to keep your head straight and what everybody else is saying and doing and remembering every point you want. It's a little easier when you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody and they're asking you questions that make you think about your answer. It's not some glib thing that you've already prepackaged. And I think it's a great way for each candidate to have an opportunity to talk literally one-on-one -on -one with the voters. Well, it, it's funny because we had the Sunday conversation with three Democrats in a row and now we're doing a string of Republicans to balance things out. Um, the Sunday Conversation is one of our new shows, mm -hmm. along with The Roundtable, which is only, what, Just maybe two months, months old. old. Yeah. Um, and the other exciting thing for interactive media with the electronic media here now is the fact that print media isn't doing the debates in the general election. No, they're we not. Are. That's kind of we, strange. I mean, we had, um, we had the, the county chair debate between Persis and uh, Davis. We had uh, District 3 uh, representing Southeast Volusia because we're New Smyrna Beach based with uh, uh, Deb Denny's, the Republican, versus Jim Hathaway, the Democrat. So it, I think that the more people see these kinds of programs and, and go, see these debates online, um, it, it's funny because if you get 20 people at a debate, or in the case of the Brandon Center in the primary, we got 250 people um, for a, a day-long series of a, a debates, marathon session, it seems now that online is where they're going to get the news and information. What, what about that, Stan? And how does that impact the way um, the candidates are reassessing advertising and, and, and getting their word out to the public? Well, I, I think that um, what you're seeing is a natural effect of, of demographic change. Uh, people my age, uh, not children like Sally, but people my age are uh, are used to getting their news. We have a daily newspaper generation. Yeah, sure, sure. We, we read our news in the morning over breakfast. Or we watch it on television or something like this. But Sally... Uh, but the truth yeah, is that younger people, and after all, my generation uh, is aging, at present company accepted, of course, and, uh, and, and there aren't as many of us as there used to be, and every year there are fewer. The younger generation that comes along doesn't get its information from the print media. They get their information on computers. They don't really get it from television as much anymore. What? They get it off the net, they get it off YouTube, they get it off Facebook, and they get it by calling things up on the net like Headline Surfer and uh, other forms of electronic media. It, it, it's just changing the whole way in which the, uh, the, the information universe is, is spread out well, and made available is changing. Let me ask you this, Sarah, and I'll give you the last word. You have SallyGillis.net. Mm -hmm. You're a political insider watchdog. How quickly can you put information up, on, and without getting into details about what you're writing about, how quickly can you get information out to the public? Instantly. I mean, all I have to do is be at my computer and I can do it just like that. And that's the great thing. Um, because the, the print media and even the TV media are not doing their jobs uh, giving a fair hearing to every issue, um, the young people, who are not stupid, are going on to the internet and maybe they'll read Headline Surfer one day and, and uh, another something the other day or several together and make their own decisions. But we're integrated. For I example, know. you're plugged into us. We have the bigger audience. You're starting to grow. We're plugged into uh, Facebook. We've got 12,000 contacts on Facebook alone in Volusia County. Um, and then the electronic media, those of us that are recognized as legitimate media, we're plugged into Google News directories and we're high in the search engines with Bing and, and Google and Yahoo. What impact does that have on, if, if politicians give a speech, 
we can instantly put it out there exactly. and sort of wait until the morning newspaper or them getting around to doing something a couple of days later. Yeah, and you can watch a quick video and, and see what uh, the position of that uh, candidate is, just like that. And that's fantastic. Very briefly, does that going to make a difference? Does, does electronic media have somewhat of a, is it becoming a niche that they think will be more accepted as we move on? Of course. As I said before, it's inevitable. Younger people um, will get older, older people will die off, and you'll have a larger and larger fraction of the population until finally it becomes a majority, until finally it becomes a totality. Well, let's be clear which about makes this. use of, uh, of electronic media first. You, you readily admit you're the senior member here. I am. And you say Sally's a young the lady. A little kid, yeah. A little yeah. kid. So I must be jail bait. Um, well, it's very And I'm possible. at 50. Sarah, I'm at 50. You certainly should be in jail. And I can, t I can tell you this. We've talked about that. I can tell you this. People my age and people your age, and a lot of people your age, we're seeing this in our analytics. If they don't have to pay a, a buck fifty or a fifty cents a day or a dollar a day for a newspaper to read yesterday's news, they have discovering a way to get on the computer and type in what they need and they get the news and it doesn't cost them anything. Well, circulation for all major newspapers and every newspaper in every city and state are down. Right. Those numbers are down. And the media has recognized that. They put up their own websites and they, they're still giving their own opinion, but they have offered another avenue. But, if, they, but if they're doing this, the same information that they're putting in the newspaper, is it more of a, just a marketing thing? I mean, for us, that's the news. Yeah, it? I know. You just have news. Like you talked about the Kudas last night, what a great game they played, and uh, that you could have it up right away. Well, not even that. You know, News Journal had a game summary. What, what are we going to give them today? We're going to give them the game summary. We're going to give them a slew of pictures. Yeah. And we're going to give them video. Yeah. You're going to be able to see the halftime highlights of the marching band. You're going to see the cheerleaders. You're going to you're going to see the quarterback and the, the coach screaming and yelling. You'll hear from the coach after the game. I think that's the difference now. And that's and why people going. like it. It's so easy to do. It's a, the only mistake the mainstream media, newspaper media, has made is that they've tried to charge people online to look at whatever they're producing. That hasn't worked out so well. well for big papers like the Wall Street Journal, yes. But for local papers and things, no. Well, like, like you said, me, print media is hurting. Well, Landon Sentinel went to digital membership where you have to pay. Yeah. Uh, the, the News Journal is going to start doing that in October. These papers, and, and they need to, that's how they sustain themselves with a the vast amount of employees versus electronic media where you can just do it with a handful of people, or in our case, one or two people exactly. shepherding and getting uh, people to, to go in. Um, so where does that take us now in terms of November 6th? Do, do you think people are going to be informed enough and prepared to make their decisions? I think they'll get more uh, immediate information from uh, websites on the net like Headline Surfer because you are so dedicated to putting things out there all the time. The newspapers are not so much doing that. They don't attend all the meetings that you attend. They're not uh, focused on the people that live Well, believe in it or not, area. We, we, we don't attend a lot of municipal government meetings. People don't want them. They, they're not interested. They want the immediacy of someone being killed in a fatal accident or some development happening. Um, but what we're finding is that people they're, they're getting the idea of, we don't have to compete, like, we have to get this up for the morning readers. Um, it's fluid. That's it's, right. We're that's filing stuff in, a lot of times, we're filing stuff at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning and sleeping in the afternoon. So it is kind of a changing dynamics, and it's kind of ironic that, and the news journals really become more aggressive in local news coverage. They give them a lot of credit. Yeah. But they've also started, they're now on this daily thing where they're doing more videos, yeah. which is what we started and that's good. almost five years ago. Yeah. So, well, Stan uh, Escudero uh, getting his troops ready for November 6th. Sally keeping government accountable. Cracking that whip. This is Henry mm -hmm. Frederick of Headline Surfer, and uh, we'll see you next time for the roundtable. Where there's a whip, there's a whip.